guys. We got a new toy and it's massive. That's what she said. And this is the Losi 5T 2.0. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh, guys, check it out. Guys, just check out this beast. It is absolutely massive. So a lot of you guys have been saying, Kev, why do you not have any losies? Lossy, losy, losy. Anyway, <laughs> here it is. We have one. But just look at the size of it. Here it is compared to a Traxxas Slash 4x4. And here it is compared to the Mighty X Max. So this thing is a one-fifth scale and it's supposed to do 40 miles an hour. And we have a GPS so we can test it. It's four-wheel drive, has double wishbone suspension front and rear. And oh guys, that suspension feels super plush. <laughs> Not supple. And look in here, we have a two-stroke petrol engine. Alright, let's get the body off and have a little look to see what's inside. Not really sure how the body comes off. How does it come off? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's got screws and stuff in here holding the body on, but surely you haven't got to take them out every time you've got to get inside. Ah, so you do have to take some screws out, which kind of does suck a little bit but hopefully there's a way of using it so that every time you want to play with it you haven't got to keep taking on and off the body let's have a look at someone else's youtube videos i just watched tony's video from ccxrc and i think there's no two ways around it we gotta take out the screws i can see this being a pain in the buttocks every time you have to change the battery or the fuel so I think I'm probably going to end up leaving these screws out. Hopefully the body's still going to be fairly sturdy like that. Check it out in there. Looks like it's really well put together. Look, we've got a disc brake there. We've got another disc brake on that side. So now our 32cc petrol two-stroke engine, coilover shocks, a working light bar. The only thing I'm not liking too much is the exhaust. Just comes out under the body, so it's just gonna fill up with all smoke, oily mess coming out the exhaust. I don't know, I'm sure we're gonna modify it in time. So this is where the battery goes for the radio, and I'm hoping it's gonna be changeable with the body on. So here we've got a standard size two cell LiPo battery, and guys, unfortunately, look at that. It just won't fit. I mean, why didn't they just make that receiver box a tiny little bit longer so you can fit a standard size 2S LiPo? Now we've got to go out and buy a specific battery. Oh man, and look at that. The battery that's supposed to go in there is like 50 pounds. That's like 60 or 70 dollars. And most of us already got these laying around. What the hell, man? Come on. I can hear it. I can see it all in the comments. I can see what you're all saying you've all said it before, you can afford a Lambo, but you can't afford a Dremel. What's going on? The Dremel doesn't always get in there. It's impossible to get in there. So I'll use it when I can. We can use it across the bottom here, but for the sides here, we just can't get it in there. So that is why I don't always use a Dremel. Now we can get the Dremel in there. I mean, that wouldn't have been any more work for them just to make this battery tray 10 millimeters longer, but nope. They want you to have to go out and buy their expensive batteries. Man, I hate it when companies do that. The only trouble is now that this battery can actually slide out of here. So I'm gonna cut a piece of plastic out of here. Ha <laughs> ha, you lossy. So next, we've got to bind it up to a radio, and I've got a DX5C here, which should be perfect for it. Comes with a receiver, but with no radio. So to bind it up, we've got to pull out this light cable here, and we've got to stick in the bind plug. Next, we've got to turn on the radio, and I've put this hot glue around the button, so you don't accidentally turn it on. Then we've got to find a brand new model memory. Add new, create, blah, blah, blah. Give it a name, that'll do. And next, we've got to bind it. All right, not like that. All right, boom, it worked. You don't need to put a bind plug in, you just hit the bind button. Oh, steering servo, plenty of power and speed. Throttle servo, the same. But 
we do need to sort out the endpoints. So we got all the trims in the central position, and if we have a look at the servo here, we can see that the arm isn't straight. And rather than to try and do it digitally, it's better to take the arm off and get it as close as you can mechanically, and then rely on the trim to fine tune it. And now we can go into the sub trims and get the steering a bit more perfect. So steering, there we go, that looks pretty good. And we're gonna get it perfect once we drive it. So throttle wise, it's already got a little bit of throttle there. So we gotta dial it back a little bit. Next, we've got to do the travel because we don't want the servo to reach its full maximum travel and it's forcing everything. So travel, steering. No, steering's fine. But throttle is definitely going too far. Yeah, look, that's forcing it. So we go down to throttle. We don't want that servo forcing. We want to hit full throttle, but without it binding. And next, the brakes. And oh, yeah, that's really forcing it too far. Look at that linkage. Oh, get that cranked down a bit. Beautiful. So I know a lot of you guys are going to be saying, Kev, will you do the electric conversion? Nope. I'm going to leave it petrol. I've got enough electric car seats. These are all electric all along here. That one's nitro. That one's nitro. The rest of them, all electric. Electric, electric, nitro, electric, electric, electric. I really do not need any more electric car seats. It's nice to have a mix. Sometimes I want to make a racket, and this is going to be perfect. Oh, who put a Land Rover in the way? Next, we've got to give it some juice, and I've got some two-stroke fuel already mixed up. This part's probably going to be tricky if you try and do this with a body on. Glug, glug, glug. try it out by the way if you want to know where we can get it from there's going to be a link down below oh right so next we've got to run it in this bit's the boring part it's out here it's wet we got been in the house doing a live stream oh look at them lights Cool. We've got to try and run it in and not go fast. It's not doable. So all run in, and because it was wet out there, we're drifting it about a bit actually, the tyres are still perfect. But we do need to beef up this body shell. So a brand new body comes in at $270. I don't really want to destroy it, so I'm going to go ahead and do the Shugu and drywall tape modification. These here in the UK are quite expensive. So these two together, which is going to need to do the body, is about £30. We're probably looking at about $50 almost, uh, plus a little bit of drywall tape to beef up the body. But... It's still a lot cheaper than having to do this. And even then, you still got to paint it anyway. So this body comes in three different sections by the looks of it. The front, the cab, and the rear bed. So we're gonna take it all apart and we're gonna start sticking some of this stuff on. So next, we're gonna give it a quick degrease. It should be all right because it's brand new and just freshly painted, but just quickly go over it again, just to make sure 
just so you know that the drywall tape and all the glue and everything is going to stick to it perfectly. By the way, I've done the same drywall tape and shoe glue mod on a lot of my bodies now, and it makes them last 10 times longer. The Mini Max here, for example, I've done it to this, and this has gone through hell and back, and the body is still in almost perfect condition. Before, if I would not have done it, it would have maybe lasted a couple of outings. Same with the X-Max. Every time I get a brand new X-Max body, it maybe lasts one skate park. Now with the modifications, it's still perfect. Next, we need some drywall tape. I like to use this fibre tape here. I got it off of eBay because this stuff here is a little bit more expensive, but it sticks better. But we can use cheaper stuff because I'm going to go after it anyway and tack it down with a bit of hot glue just to hold it in place. And then afterwards, we go in with a shoe goo. If you was to go straight in with a shoe goo, then this tape would start sliding around and lifting and it's going to get annoying. Oh, right, so we got the tape all on there. We could go straight in and now apply the shoe goo, but even though this tape's quite high quality, it will start lifting, especially in corners and in edges. If you start putting it straight on, it's going to start lifting and you're going to end up with a big headache. So I'm just going to get out my hot glue gun and just tack it down in a few places just to hold it there while we apply the shoe goo. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead, get the shoe goo. I like to put a pair of gloves on and then just go over the whole body and just smear it in as thinly as you possibly can. Otherwise, you're going to end up using loads of it. It's going to end up being expensive and it's going to make the body heavy. So there we go. Got it all on there. Just got to leave it now for a couple of hours to go a bit drier and then we can screw it all back together again. Oh, right, so it's been a couple of hours. It's all gone dry now. So now we've got to go around all the holes and just clear them so we can get the screws back in. So now that we've done that, we can now reassemble the body panels. Now these little washers here, I actually super glued them onto the cage because these fall off quite easily. It would have made the whole lining up the panels and everything a bit of a nightmare. Boom, all back together again. I mean, it's added a tiny bit of weight, but not much at all really. And this is probably gonna last at least 10 times longer. There you go, guys. If you want to know where we can get it from, there's going to be a link down below.